Hello everybody, my name is Chris. Welcome to the Innova Advantage. Welcome back uh, to anyone else who's back watching again. Today, I mean, we, this is the Innova Advantage, like I said, where we go over all things OBD2 and OBD1 and anything car related, almost anything car related. I wanna thank everybody for joining us today. Um, today, we're gonna get into something I'm sure we all have experienced, we've heard, witnessed multiple times at some point as regular drivers or with other drivers, what are those mysterious and sometimes awful sounds and vibrations coming from the vehicle? I mean, these sounds can range from a wide array of sounds and the vibrations could be a lot of different types of vibration, anything from a minor to a very heavy shutter. I mean, this can strike fear and anxiety into the hearts of drivers. For most people, especially teenagers, yeah, am I right? No, we te they tend to ignore these, turn their radio all the way up, blast that music to drown that sound out or disregard the problem. Because right, out of sight, out of mind, I should say it, out of hearing, out of declaring. For your own sake, you should know what some s these sounds sound like or what the vibrations feel like or what kind of the harshness. But more, we're just gonna go over sounds and vibrations. But let's see what these could mean and let you know before it's too late to go back. As usual, at any time during this program, you have any questions about anything, no, car related, please don't hesitate to ask. So let's see if we have any questions. Does anybody have any questions for me today? This guy right here. Zog, I'm the way. What's up, Zog? I'm the only teenager that fixes them. <laughs> nice. Well, good job, Zog. Good job. That's nice. Good job, Zog. Yeah. Hopefully, fix them more. All right. You can continue. So let's go. Let's go ahead and, and dive into this ocean of information. So through wear and tear, cars will just naturally break down from daily usage. Also, depending where you live, obviously, if you have harsher climates, if you're in a you know, Canada or the northern border more, or just Midwest where it snows, or you get that very humid, hot weather, and if you're in the, you know, or in the desert, you got that dry weather. Anyways, con climate conditions will speed up a lot of things, but this breakdown will affect how the car operates, and you may get sounds that aren't normal to what it's used to sound like. Um, a lot of us will disregard and continue driving because the car is still operational, but, Maybe you take a second and give it some attention. That way you can uh, keep the longevity going here. And don't forget to drop us a like and subscribe. Okay, let's get into the MVH, and that stands for noise, vibration, and harshness. So NVH, noise, vibration, and harshness. We'll get into harshness more a little other time. I mean, the more harshness is when you're driving, you can do a road test to, you know, on a known road that you commonly drive on to to feel if there's any differences, but the NVH concerns have become more important as drivers have become more sensitive to these issues. Well, they've always been important, um, but drivers seem to be more sensitive to these issues. So drivers have higher expectations of comfort levels with technology advancements today. Um, noise, vibration, and harshness, NVH issues are more noticeable due to reduced engine noise and better insulation in general. I mean, you don't hear vehicles with the rattling, rattling stereo system as much as you used to. That's a different thing. But So the main areas of the vehicle that produce the noise, vibration, and harshnesses are the tires, the engine accessories, suspension, driveline. And those are the four major ones. Um, so engine accessories could be like mounts, things like that. So it's necessary to isolate these uh, noises, vibrations, into specific areas to allow more detailed diagnosis. Specifically, like I mentioned earlier, road tests, um, and we'll go over a little more later, is often the best method, especially you just driving a vehicle you're fully aware of, um, that you're used to driving, that if you've, dri you've driven under vehicles in good conditions, you, I mean, you can tell if something's up, basically. Um, so the five most common sources of non-axle noise are exhaust, tire, roof racks, trim, moldings, tra and transmission. Ensure that none of the following conditions are the cause of the noise before proceeding with the driveline strip down and diagnosis, okay? Um, in certain conditions, the pitch of the exhaust may sound like gear noise. 
um, or under conditions like a wheel bearing rumble. And that's not good when you hear that. So tires can produce a high pitched thread, whine or roar similar to gear noises. This is particularly the case for non-standard tires. Now back to the, the exhaust, the gear noise, if you get that rumble, roar, and you hear it's coming from the wheel, it could be a broke bearing, you need to get that fixed. That could be really dangerous. Um, trim and moldings can cause whistling or whining noises. Clunk may occur when the throttle is applied or released due to backlash somewhere in the driveline. Bearing rumble sounds like marbles being tumbled. That's what I was referring to more for when you got a broken bearing and you want to get that fixed right away because it can lock up when you're driving. Um, now, noise conditions. Some of the noise conditions are very dis difficult to describe. There are a lot of different terms they use. However, the following are the most common or useful terms and are accompanied by suggestions as to when they are mostly likely to occur. Like gear noise, for example, is typically a howling or whining due to gear damage or incorrect bearing preload. It can occur at various speeds and driving conditions where it can be continuous. I know someone in my family is a Highlander that's, and it's, it might be the accelerated bearing, but I think it's the power steering because the car was in a wreck and it was fixed, but it's still making that whining noise when you back out, but everything else runs well. Um, chuckle. The chuckle is a rattling noise that sounds like a stick held in the spokes of a spinning bicycle or if you got a baseball card in there. It sounds like that. It usually occurs when decelerating. Knock is similar to chuckle, very similar, but it may be louder and occurs on acceleration or deceleration. Check out and rule out the tires, exhaust, and trim items before disassembly to diagnose and correct gear noise. Sounds more like a woodpecker, a higher noise. So let's go ahead and get some, uh, lend me your ear and let's get some here. Let's hear these some noises. So let's go ahead and get that knocking. The first, the, the first sound we'll go over is some knocking. <laughs> so let's go ahead and play some knocking. Roll that tape. You hear that? It sounds like Woody the Woodpecker, right? It's not. <laughs> it's like, fix me. No, okay. Yep. So yeah, there you go. All right, hopefully you can hear that loud and clear. I could barely hear it. Let's hear it one more time, play it again. There we go, show me the knocking. Oh, here, there it goes. Yeah, beat the belt, hey Zog. Belt squealing is concerning sometimes. Yeah, it could be that, yeah, the, the serpentine belt. So yeah, we'll, get to that. we'll get to that one. So if, now back to the knocking. If you hear this, it may be something, <clears throat> it may mean something's happening with the camshafts in your car, either big end bearings worn small end bearings that are worn or earner cam followers. For sure, you want to have a mechanic take a look if you're not too savvy and see how severe the situation is. Play it one more time. Come on, maestro. There you go. Now the next one is a slap, the slap hap, the slapping sound. It's a piston slap. Let's, let's roll this one, maestro. This normally sounds like this. Go ahead. Cue the Will Smith. Keep sound, that didn't sound too slappy. It's, it's very subtle on the start. Let's go again. There you go, right there. It's very, it's very subtle slap. But it's not as common. So usually when you hear that, that's a worn piston or bores in your engine. That's not good. But again, worth a look from a technician. Hopefully it's something else because you don't, <laughs> yeah. don't want to replace those pistons. Yeah, very expensive. So yeah, taking out the whole engine, but no. So next up, rattle. Now let's, let's hear that rattling noise, which should sound like this. Cue the noise. So you hear the rattle? There you go, right there. So usually when you hear this sound, it means a loose component, broken piston, or, com yeah, or a, a broken component. So usually, yeah, it means something's loose in there. It's not tightened all the way. Let's go on for the next one. Now, this is what we're referring to, Zog, the, be the belt squealing. So the next sound we'll go over is squeals, which sound like this. Play the squeals. You hear the deal with the squeal? There you go, squealy. So usually this, the reason for this is due to a slipping drive belt. Yeah, that's squealy Dan. Let's play it one more time, Maestro, let's go. There we go, I like it, squealing. 
it's slipping, slipping into the future for you to take it as a mechanic. So the last one, ticking. And let's go, let's hear this ticking sound. Come on, it should sound like this. You hear that? You know, this could be a multitude of reasons. I mean, for this noise, it could be ticking from your solenoids, which isn't good. I mean, it's not too bad to fix. You have to look at the transmission. It could be other issues as well. This cause of noise can be traced by first looking for leaks as well. A dry bearing or joint will produce significant noise. So when you get that, you got to inspect the CV joint gaiters. Those are the boots for cracks, tears, or splits. I mean, those, that could be the little thing that's causing these noises. And then if not, inspect the underbody for any indication of grease splatter near the front wheel half shaft joint boots. Okay, so again, next, inspect the inboard um, CV joint stub shaft bearing housing seal for liquid leakage at the bearing housing. And, and then last but not least, check the torque on the front axle wheel hub retainer. Sounds like crickets, huh? <laughs> and then the rocker noises, yep. So the next thing we're gonna look at, we're gonna uh, talk about our vibrations. These aren't good vibrations that you've been experiencing with your car, so. Clicking, popping, or grinding noises may be noticeable at low speeds and, be, and can be caused by the following. Inner or outer CV joints that are worn. This is often due to a lack of lubrication, so make sure it's lubricated. So check for split gaiters. You have loose drive shafts, shafts. Maybe another component is contacting the drive shaft. It's rubbing against it. Damage or incorrectly installed wheel bearing, brake, or suspension components. This can also cause that, that, uh, that rubbing. The following may cause vibration at normal road speeds. Let's go. So what would that be? You could have out of balance wheels. That's never good. Out of round tires. The thread could be a little off. So the following next things may cause, cause a little shudder or shimmy or vibration during acceleration. Damage powertrain, drivetrain mounts. Those, that's, very, that's common usually um, to have a drivetrain mount that's not secured all the way or if you were in a little fender bender, it could be loose. Excessively worn or damaged outborn or inborn CV joints. Um, this is kind of an issue. My CV joints are wearing away on my Mustang. So the vibration description is kind of described. You got the shake, shimmy, uh, you know, shutter, buzz. You know, you also have kind of a drone that goes with the buzz, but that's more of a noise. Uh, vibrations can be constant or variable. They can occur in every drive condition or during portions of the entire engine operating speed range. Check if we have any. Oh, thanks, Zog, have a good one. So yeah, they can occur in any driving condition or during a portion of the entire engine operating, operating speed range. Vibrations are usually caused by some rotating component or, com or components, or sometimes by the improper combustion of air, fuel mixture, and individual, check and individual cylinders. It may with these get a check engine light code to come follow it, like a P0301, 302, something like that, or 300. Under normal conditions, a rotating component will not produce a noticeable vibration. However, if the component is loose, misaligned, not properly balanced, or out of round, then a noticeable vibration can be produced. Engine vibrations that do not generate a noise are generally created by an out of round, out of balance, or damaged component. So that's where you get that vibration. So I mean, that's going to do it all today, folks. It's a pretty quick one. Uh, we'll go over a little more harshness next time. But before we end our programming today, we'd like to thank you all for joining us. Again, this is a weekly program, so make sure to tune in again next week, Tuesday, same time, to catch our next episode where we discuss and answer your ANOVA questions and anything automotive related. Now, one thing real quick I like to end on is I do have a little feel for thought. You can use a metal elongated object or a screwdriver, a wrench preferably to touch different components of your engine um, or different, or actually different parts of your vehicle when it's running. You don't, you gotta be careful if it's running, you don't wanna touch certain parts of your engine. But you can touch certain metal components with your long wrench and then put your ear to it too. You can hear actually noises that way if you don't have a stethoscope. But there you go, that's all we have for you today, folks. And make sure to like, follow, and subscribe.